My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have already solved every single math problem from the book that I'm holding in my hand here. The official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. This should be your starting point for your preparation. As I said, if you're interested in watching the sol math solutions to any of the math problem in this book, we have already done all of them. You will find those solutions from day number 251 through 400. These problems that appeared in the second edition of the revised GRE, they are almost all the same problem problems as the ones that appeared in the first edition, with the, with the few exceptions. And if you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250, which, is, which are from first edition of the revised GRE. But the, most of the problems, as I said, they are the same, and so are the page numbers as a matter of fact. Right now, what we are in the process of doing are solving some quantitative comparison questions from the book that I'm holding in my hand now, which is GRE General Test, the 10th edition. Because, why? Because the new books that they have published, the first edition and the second edition to revise GRE, in my opinion, do not contain enough practice problem for the quantitative comparison questions. And quantitative comparison questions are very important type of questions, very important questions. They are very different type of questions. These are not the quite kind of questions that we come across typically in our everyday uh, school work, which is why we want to get some more practice on them, and that's what we've been doing. This today is our second day in the series, day number 402. Let's turn to, let's, let's turn to page number 123. If you happen to own this book, great. If not, try to get hold of one. It, you will find it helpful. Day, day 402 it is, and we are on problem number 7. Problem number 7. Problem number 7 says that the tax on 45000 tax on $45,000 is $1,200. That's, we, are, we are being told that that information is given. That tax on the property that is worth 45000 is 1200 what we are being asked to compare is the tax is the tax on 54000 versus $1200 or rather versus $1300 versus $1300 there are several ways we can solve these problems Let's take one of those ways. For example, we can set this, this problem as a proportion problem and solve it that way. For example, if you want to do it as a proportion problem, we'll set it up like this. We have the tax and we have the, uh, rather, we have the value of the property and we have the amount of the tax. So here's the tax amount, here's the value of the property. And we are told that the tax is 1200 on a property that is worth 45,000. Leave that as 1,000. That's 45 is the 45,000. And that, that ratio, that ratio, that, that whatever that is, has to equal to this ratio right here. And this has to be the same as the tax on property that is worth 54,000. And all we have to do now is solve for x. So if you cross multiply, we find that x is equal to, x is going to be equal to 1,200 times 54. 1,200, which I'm going to write as 12 times 100, times 54 over 45. And we can get going. That's it. We can get going. What can we do? How can we reduce it? Well, I see a 45 and I see a 54. We know they are both multiples of 9. 9 fives are 45. 9 fives are 45. And 9 6 are 54. So that makes it very easy. And the reason why I wanted to break down 1200, the reason we wanted to break down 1200 as 12 times 100, is because it's easier to deal with 5 at the bottom, because we knew the bottom quantity is a multiple of 5. That we did know. 45 is a multiple of 5. And if bottom is a multiple of 5, and if we can somehow get 100 on the top, that makes it easier because now we don't have to deal with 1200, we just have to deal with 100 and we know 100 has 25. 100 has 25. So that's it, we're done. That's our answer. So we get 12 times 2 times, oh, this is very easy. 2 times 6, 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times 6, 2, two, two times 6 is 12 and 12 times 12 is, we know what 12 square is. 12 square is 144. So x is going to be 144. And then put, don't forget the zero right here. There you go. So it turns out that the tax on the property that is worth 54,000 is 1,400 and 1,440 
we're being asked to compare that amount versus 1300 and therefore the answer is A. Therefore the answer is A. There was one way of doing it. This is a very classical way, very orthodox way, very traditional way, very, very, very academic way. The quicker way, in my opinion, I'm not sure if it's quicker or not, but a different way that we could have done it is this way. Right here. I'm going to show you a different way now, which is a little bit of an unorthodox way. I'll give you, give me a second and I'll show it to you. The way we just did it, the solution that we did is, there is nothing novel about it. There is nothing, there is nothing novel about it. This is a very, very pedestrian, very common, very ordinary way of doing the problem. Let's do it a different way. Let's do it a different way. This was the, the way we just did it is a very pedestrian way, very common way, very ordinary way. Uh, and there is nothing novel about it. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, as we are working on the math problem so that you have a, a, be a better chance of getting a decent score in the English portion of the exam and I don't see no reason why you wouldn't be interested in that. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, you can learn this word. Word pedestrian is something that we learn on day number 13. Just type in GRE vocabulary words, GRE vocabulary words, day number 13 and you will learn the word pedestrian. The word pedestrian as we used in this context. What we said is that the method that we just finished there was nothing novel about it. It was very common, very ordinary way of doing it. It was a very pedestrian method. It's a very pedestrian method. I'm looking at my list here under N to find the day when we learned about novel. Again, day number 13. I had the hunch, I had the hunch, I had the inkling that they might be on the same day because they are antonyms. I had the hunch, I had the instinct, I had the gut feeling, I had the, I had an inkling that they might be they might have been covered on the same day because they are antonyms. When did we learn the word inkling? We learned the word inkling on day number 73. Again, just type in GRE vocabulary words, day 73. You will see a video, watch that video, you will learn the word inkling along with a whole bunch of other words. Let's, let's do the non-traditional way. Okay, enough of the talk. I've been talking too much here. Here's the non-traditional way. I need the room. Or can we do it? We need the room. Let's do it right here. We are being asked to compare. We are being asked to compare the tax on 54,000 versus 1300. Versus 1300. But what we, what we need to understand is that, what we need to understand is that the tax on the amount of 40, 54,000, the tax on the amount of 54,000 has to be the same as the tax on 45,000 plus the tax on the remaining 9,000. And how much is the tax on 45,000? We know the tax on 45,000 is 1,200. They tell us here. So this amount is 1,200 plus whatever the tax happens to be, whatever the tax happens to be on the 9,000. So that's what the first column is. The first column and they say tax on 54,000. That first column actually boils down to $1,200 plus whatever the tax happens to be on 9,000. Here we have 13, 1,300. Here we have 1300 and 1300, 1300 in turn can be written as 1200 plus 100, 1200 plus 100. Are you with me so far in the story? Well, we see 1200 here now, we see 1200 here now, since we, appear, we, since we see 1200 in both columns, that 1200 serves no purpose now. We can cross it out and essentially what the question boils down to is that we are being asked here, essentially what we are being asked here is the amount of tax on 9000 versus $100. Are you still with me in the story? 9,000 we know is a fifth of 45,000. 9,000, 9,000 we know is a fifth of 45,000. Since 9,000 is a fifth of 45,000, the tax on 9,000 has to be the fifth of this amount, fifth of 1,200. Tax on 9, therefore, this is how we write therefore, therefore, tax on 9,000 has to equal the fifth of the amount of tax on 45,000. The amount of tax on 45,000 is 1,200. So we're looking at fifth of 1,200, whatever the fifth of 1,200 is, versus 100. All everything else is gone. 1,200, fifth of 1,200 versus 100, we already know that a tenth, we know the tenth of 1,200. How much is tenth of 1,200? We know the tenth of 1,200 is 120. 
a fifth is going to be twice as much. But that's not the point. A tenth of one hundred, one tenth of twelve hundred is already one twenty. We only have one hundred here. This is already more than one hundred. The answer is A. The answer is A. Just like before. Just like before. Before we found the answer to be A. Of course, we're going to find the answer to be A this time also. Let's do one very similar question to this one, which is not in the book, just for extra practice. Okay? Just give me a break, and we'll do it again in a second. As a matter of fact, I'll set it up, and you do it. This new method that we just learned, and the old method, the proportion method, yourself, while I take my break. So here's a new question for you. Tax on $60,000. Tax on $60,000. We are told is $800. The question is how much is the, how much does the tax on $75,000? How much does the tax on $75,000 compare? with a thousand dollars. Now I'll take my break, you work on it. Again, since this is already on the blackboard, we can continue with this method and we'll do the classical method in a second. Tax on 75,000 is, is going to be same as the tax on, on 60,000 because we're given 60,000 here. Plus the tax on the remaining 15,000. Well, we know what the tax on 60,000 is. Tax on 60,000. We know what the tax on 60,000 is. Tax on, tax on 60,000 is 800. And what about the tax on 15,000? Tax of 15,000. 15,000 is a fourth of 60,000. 15,000 is a fourth of 60,000. Therefore, the tax on 15,000 is going to be one fourth of the tax on 60,000. Tax on 60,000 is 800, therefore the tax on 15,000 is going to be fourth of 800, which is 200. So we get 200 plus 800, we get 1,000. And in the second column, we also have 1,000, the answer is C. So that's, that's the non classical way of doing it. And now we'll do the classical way, the proportion method. This problem that we are working on, as a matter of fact, the problem that we just finished, the original problem, when it was given in the real exam, the percentile was 72%. 72% of the people got it right, the remaining 28% missed it. Let's do the same problem, uh, the orthodox way, the classical way, the traditional way with the proportions. So here we have text. Here we have the value of the property. We are told that tax is $800 on a property that is worth $60,000. The question is, how much is the tax on $75,000? Again, cross multiply, and you will find that x equals 800 times 75, 800 times 75 over 60. Let's see what we can do. We can cross out this, this zero. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. If we divide top and bottom by 2, this is going to become 40 and this is going to become 3. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. 75 into 3. 7 has how many 3's? 7 has 2 3's. The remaining 1 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 15. And 15 has 5 3's. Of course, it's nothing earth shattering. Obviously, 25 times 3 is 75. We're making fuss for no reason. So it's 40 times. 25. 40 times 25. And how can we tackle that? Well, 40 times 25, 40 times 25 has to be same as 4 times 25, 4 times 25 times 10. 40 times 25 is same as 4 times 25 times 10. And 4 times 25 we know is 100 times 10 is going to give us 1,000, which is exactly what we found last time. 1,000 versus the second column, which was also 1,000. Let's do number 8. Question number 8. Question number 8. We are still in the medium questions. 6 through 10 are medium questions. We are still in the medium territory. And the percentile here is 74%. We are told that the area we are told that the area of a square is 36. 
and we are being asked to compare the perimeter versus 24. As you can see, it's a very babyish problem, isn't it? If the area of the square is 36, that implies that each side, each side of the square has to be 6, because, because 6 times 6 is 36. And therefore the perimeter, since each side is 6, the perimeter is going to be 6 times 4, which is the same as 24, the answer is C. As I said, this, this, was, this was a very silly question, very babyish question. That was it. I'll see you tomorrow on day number 403. Okay? Bye now.